everyone, this is Bob Martin with the Nautilus Dry Docks, and this is chapter two of the build blog of this OTW uh, Upholder class submarine. In the first chapter, I went through the construction and setup of the OTW dive module, so the functional aspect of the boat is complete and ready for installation. Uh, in this chapter, we're going to begin the prep of the fiberglass hull for RC operation. I'll walk you through that uh, step by step. So if you do end up with one of these amazing kits, uh, you should be able to follow along and construct it without too much of an issue. So without any further delay, let's get started. One of the first things that you're always going to want to do in any construction project like this is make sure that you assemble reference material. In this particular case, I have a collection of photos that I got off of the internet uh, from some friends and then also uh, photos that I took in the dry docks in uh, Victoria, British Columbia when I had the opportunity to stand next to the boat when it was undergoing its initial refit. And the importance of this is to make sure that you can get the details right. For example, the uh, deck splits that run down the entire hull uh, where these um, covers go uh, because those are actually recessed and then you can see on the sail there's the same thing. And none of those details, unfortunately, are present in the actual hull itself. And so we're going to need to figure out where those go, cut them out, uh, and glue in some panels behind there to make the effect look proper. So what we're going to do now, um, using these reference photos, we're going to mark out on the hull where those panels go, and, uh, and we are going to cut them out. So, utilizing my reference information, I have marked out the location of all of these recessed panels, uh, and they are all different sizes. I took uh, reference from these photos um, using the scribed marks in there as reference points. And then I also marked out this demarcation line between the uh, upper shell and the pressure hull itself. So what that looks like is uh, it comes just a little bit forward of this scribed line right here. It goes down the entire length uh, of the hull and then it goes past this scribed line uh, at a slight downward angle. There's like a little flare that goes uh, down there. What we're going to do, uh, I'm going to work on that next and we are going to cut into the hull to represent that demarcation between that uh, upper deck and the pressure hull uh, utilizing Dremel, uh, patience, and a very steady hand. So let's get set up for that, shall we? Here you can see the setup that I came up with that uh, basically scribed in that uh, demarcation between that upper section and the lower section of the hull. Uh, I've got a routing bit inside my Dremel. I've got the appropriate angle uh, to undercut in here. Uh, and basically I clamped this board in place to act as a guide to make sure that we end up with uniform uh, depth across the entire length of the boat. Uh, and then it basically just ran the model down the length. And what we ended up with is a... Um, very straight, very uniform cut in the boat. The only thing I'm gonna to need to do by hand uh, is this curved line at the rear section right there. So we'll go on to that, uh, clean this up. But again, this is very uh, recommended. This worked out really, really well. So if you've got the uh, time and patience building this, is definitely worthwhile. Okay, a little jump in progress here. Um, I have cut out all of these domes. I have also filed all of the edges and I've put a bevel, about a 45 degree bevel on them. Uh, as you can see in these reference photos, uh, you got a bevel that goes around the perimeter of all of these cut out sections. So you can either do that by filing the bevel um, into this 
or you can, uh, after you put the backing on there, you can fill it and try and get a, a 45 degree fillet in there. But um, I think this is gonna make for a cleaner uh, install. So that's what I've done for all of the cutouts. Uh, I've also cleaned up and sanded my demarcation uh, along the entire hull there. Now what I'm gonna do, uh, I'm gonna flip this over Grab a little bit of coarse grit sandpaper. I'm gonna rough up all of the perimeters uh, of these openings, uh, including the sail. And then I'm gonna be using some uh, 16th inch thick black styrene plastic. Uh, and we're gonna be putting those as a backing for each one of those cutouts. Uh, and because this is contoured, I'm actually gonna heat up each one of these pieces with a heat gun first. So let's see what that looks like. I have moved on to the installation of these uh, blanking panels. You can see the finished product right there. And all I'm using uh, is sheet styrene. That's uh, like 1 16th of an inch thick uh, black styrene. You can get it online at your hobby shop. Um, what it actually entails though, particularly in these front and rear areas, uh, is a little heat to conform the sheet to the shape of the hull. So I use my uh, heat gun and basically what you're going to want to do um, is warm up the sheet styrene just until it starts to become malleable uh, and it's easy to overheat it so just take your time. Um, once it does get uh, just a little bit soft um, you put it in place uh, press it, hold it, uh, and it'll conform to the shape of the hull as it cools. So as you can see, I've got uh, all of these blanking plates uh, finished. I've got the one in the forward part of the sail there. I've got a little bit of filler to make sure that all the gaps are filled. So I'm going to finish installing the rear uh, blanking sheets, and we'll move on to the next step. All right, now that all the panels are in place, what I want to do is run just a bead of filler around the outside, the perimeter there, just to fill in that little tiny little crack that goes around the outside to make a nice seamless fit. Uh, I'm going to use the nitro stand. Uh, I've showed this in my videos before. This is a, like a glazing putty. Uh, works really, really well. And all I'm going to do is just put a little bit on the end of my finger there and just rub right around the perimeter, pushing it into the seam. The other thing that you can do is uh, get a rag uh, with a little bit of acetone on it and then you can wipe it down immediately afterward uh, and you can also clean up your fingers. So we're going to let that dry and then we're going to be able to sand that down, uh, make a nice smooth surface in there. What I'm going to do next is uh, remove the rear section of the top hull and that is going to allow us to unify all of our linkages, our top and butter, uh, bottom rudders. And fortunately there's a great scribed line for us to use. Uh, right in the back here. What I'm going to do is uh, just mark that out with a pencil so it's easier to see. And then I'm going to utilize my uh, diamond cutoff wheel on my Dremel and uh, we're just going to cut that all the way around. You can also use a razor saw uh, and if you don't have one they look like this. Actually, I might even utilize that for, uh, for this one. It makes a nice clean cut, uh, about a 32nd of an inch thick. So you're gonna cut that all the way around. You're gonna end up with two pieces. This is the resultant cut, uh, and I did elect to utilize my razor saw for this. You can see it's a razor blade um, cut. It's gonna be really, really tight which is beautiful, exactly what we want. Now what we're gonna end up doing is mounting this uh, to the lower hull, something like this. 
so that we can begin our drive shaft installation and installation of our control surfaces. One really important thing when you're gluing any two surfaces together is to make sure that you get maximum adhesion uh, for your glues. And the best way to do that is to rough up the surfaces. Now this is a nice smooth gel coat finish. What I'm going to do is utilize my Dremel with a sanding drum uh, on the end and I am going to rough up the mating surface on both sides so that the glue has lots of opportunity to adhere to both surfaces. All right, that done, I'm gonna utilize some uh, nice heavy duty two ton epoxy resin, two part epoxy resin. Uh, make sure you don't use the five minute stuff. Make sure you get at least, uh, you know, like a two or six hour cure uh, epoxy and that'll make sure that uh, it remains waterproof uh, the entire time you own your sub. So I'm gonna mix this 50-50 in my Dixie cup, uh, put a little coat on there, put the top on, tape it down so it doesn't move and we will let it cure. All right, our uh, upper rear section of hull has now been adhered permanently to the lower hull. Now what we wanna do is take our brass propeller. I'm going to measure out the diameter uh, of the hub. I've got exactly 31 millimeters. I'm going to lock that down in my calipers there and then what we're going to do is find out the point on the hull that that 31 millimeter diameter uh, comes into play. So I'm going to mark that out. on the hull and that is the point that we are actually going to end up cutting off the tip so that the uh, propeller will flow smoothly uh, from the hub into the hull. What I want to do though is think ahead uh, the next step and what I'm going to do is mix up some more uh, of that epoxy resin. I'm going to fill this cap uh, about a half an inch or maybe a quarter of an inch past that point. And what that'll do is it'll seal off the end after we cut off the, uh, the tip of the hull there and allow us to install the bushing for our prop shaft. So mix up some of the epoxy, uh, pour it in there, keep the hull nice and vertical uh, and let that cure off. All right, as you can see, I have actually sanded out all of these panels. Uh, so in theory, they're gonna be nice and smooth, but we will find out for sure when we do our priming stage. What I've decided to do now is permanently adhere the sail to the upper deck of the submarine. Um, and what I've done, because this is such a big piece and it's so uh, thin and flexible, I've put a piece of foam on the inside there to push the outsides of the sail to the correct position so they align perfectly with the scribed lines uh, in the hull. Next step from here, I'm just going to use some thin CA glue uh, and I'm going to adhere the sail to the upper hull. Once that's done, it's going to be quite a uh, weak bond uh, and the stage after that we're going to use some epoxy and cloth to lay up the seam so that it is permanently adhered to the model. So next step, uh, a little bit of thin CA around the perimeter there, get that permanently glued on. All right, we are going to adhere our sail, our conning tower, to the upper hull as I mentioned before. You're going to need some um, fiberglass cloth. Uh, and this is different than the mat. This is designed specifically for epoxy. Uh, I have cut about a six or seven inch strip uh, by about an uh, inch and three quarters, two inches. And then you can see how I've cut that there. I've notched it. And the reason I'm going to do that is as I put this in, um, as we fold the layers over, it will allow them to adhere to the upper hull without buckling the fabric. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up a batch of uh, epoxy. I'm going to thin it down with a little bit of acetone so that it becomes just a little bit thinner and soaks in a little bit easier. 
um, tamp it all down, make sure it looks good, and uh, let it cure. And here we have the final product. You can see that the matting has been wet down really good. We've got some drips going down there. Now you want to make sure that those don't flow down, um, get around the exterior of your model. So now that this is all set up, um, tamped down, nice and thick and saturated, uh, I am actually just going to flip it over, set it down right here. and we will let it cure right side up so that none of the epoxy has any opportunity to drip out and get over all of our cool details. Okay, uh, as I mentioned, we did a little bit of cutting on the tail there. It marked out the uh, length that I needed to cut off of that tail section, uh, and I did so just with a hacksaw. Uh, did a nice straight cut after marking out the perimeter uh, with a pencil and in order to do that uh, what I did is I stood up the model basically like this on a table uh, spun it around and marked out at the appropriate height to get a uniform circumference around the perimeter of the hull and as you can see the resultant mate up there is just about bang on uh, it will sit about a sixteenth of an inch out because we're going to put a little spacer in there, but that is what it's going to look like. Just gorgeous. Um, upper hull, the only other thing that I've done with that is I've uh, adhered sonar dome uh, onto the top there, roughing up both surfaces and using some rubber reinforced cyanoacrylate. So that is on nice and solid. Uh, I think what we're going to do now, I'm going to install the bushing for the main prop shaft in there, which comes with the kit. Uh, basically going to use a uh, compass to mark out the center perfectly, uh, drill it out, install the bushing, make sure everything is lined up. And then we're going to install some lead in the keel, so let's get moving. All right, as you can see, I have drilled the hole there. And what I've also done is I've countersunk uh, the outside to match up to this bushing here. Uh, otherwise, it'll sit proud by uh, about 3 16ths of an inch. Um, now, what we're going for here is a nice flush fit. I've got everything um, in there. I'm going to hold the shaft along the center line of the boat. Uh, and as you can see, we've got a uniform gap uh, around the outside. It's about a 16th of an inch. The bushing uh, is uh, recessed into the rear section of the hull uh, about 32nd or maybe a 16th uh, of an inch uh, so that leaves us with this nice uniform gap for our propulsion so uh, that done let's put some weight in the keel all right let's talk about ballast weight here for a little bit now you got lots of options here and you think about it ballast is just uh, weight. There's no special formula that you need to utilize uh, to put ballast in, but there's a few things that work really well. Um, in this particular case, what I'm going to use uh, are these little lead balls, and they come in a package that looks like this. Uh, it's basically shot, and I believe they use these in, in uh, shotguns. So you've got uh, all of these little pellets, and the good news about these is you pour them in, uh, shuffle the hull, and it all settles to the lower part of the boat. Good thing about the upholder is you've got that hollow keel 
uh, that you can see on the bottom there and it allows you to fill everything up without protruding into the hull itself. The OTW dive module has uh, quite a bit of buoyancy to it so you can add quite a bit and as you can see I've got this basically flush with the bottom of the hull. So this is the way that I'm going to tackle uh, the ballast. Uh, I've got my beads in there, they're loose and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to mix up uh, actually I'm going to use some casting resin but you can use uh, uh, fiberglass resin or epoxy. Uh, mix it up, pour it in, let it settle uh, and cure up and you'll have a fully integrated ballast keel. All right, we have jumped ahead here um, just a little bit, but this will be really easy to follow along. So you can see uh, I've encapsulated the uh, shot, that lead shot in the keel with uh, some epoxy. So that is all sealed up, fused uh, to the hull. And then I've also installed my mounting brackets for the watertight cylinder, the dive module as OTW likes to call it. Um, the big thing with this is to ensure that uh, your spacing is correct. And the way that I did that is I actually uh, slipped the watertight, or sorry, the, the mounting bulkheads onto the cylinder, dropped everything into place, and then secured it. So uh, the way that this works, I'm gonna try and do this one-handed. Your rear, knurled nuts slip into the uh, bulkhead here. I can't really see what I'm doing. There we go. So those slip in at the back and then at the front um, just slips in place. So you can see it's held in that the, uh, the cradle there. And now what's going to happen, I'm going to take the um, lockdown bulkhead here and this just drops over top like that single screw in the top will hold it down and this would be locked firmly in place so talking about spacing you want to have your ballast tank uh, in the center of the model and that's exactly where I have placed it what that works out to uh, in practical application is approximately 13 inches from the bow to the forward face of the cylinder. So you do have a little bit of wiggle room in there, but uh, 13 inches is what I ended up with. And this ends up giving us a lot of room in the front here for the installation of our 5 amp sealed lead acid battery. Um, and also for the linkages for our forward dive planes. All right, what I'm going to do now before I get too much further uh, is install the stainless steel hardware that will allow us to mount this um, inside. So I'm just going to slip the nut in there, put my bolt through on the inside, and uh, I'm going to screw that um, into place until that nut is held up at the top of that recess. That done, now all I'm going to do is just going to put a little bit of CA glue uh, around the top. That'll hold that nut in place. Um, and that's really all it's doing because all of the force is going to be directed upward when you tighten this down. So like I said, just a little bit of uh, CA, put that around the nut, let it cure, and then we can back off our bolt. The glue has now uh, kicked off. I'm just going to back out my bolt. And again, the way that this works, it just goes in like this. The bolt drops down through the hole in the top and screws into the nut. And that holds the cylinder down. Single bolt makes everything nice and tidy. Since we're working on the keel, let's, uh, let's make some drain holes. So we've got the keel of the uh, upholder here. I've flipped everything over. I've got the edge of the boat hanging off the table, so this is a nice flat surface. Um, and basically, I'm just going to use a drill with standard drill bits. Good news about using that lead is that it's nice and soft, and it'll get drilled through uh, with no problem. So uh, I have marked out the location of my bulkheads uh, in pencil to make sure that I do not hit them. And I am going to drill these holes 
Um, I got five of them. They're going to be half inch uh, diameter holes. So uh, I got five of them lined up there. We're just going to run the drill through and uh, allow the water to escape our hole. So I've pre-drilled these holes with quarter inch um, and now I'm just going to run through with the larger drill bit. There we go, as easy as that. So looking inside, you can see we've got nice, crisp, clean holes for allow drainage uh, in our hull. And you'll notice that these bulkheads have all got notches that'll allow water to flow through and drain to the lowest points of the hull. All right, let's talk a little bit about uh, hull alignment here. Now, Bob does an awesome job of putting these uh, lips on the inside of the upper and lower hull, and that helps maintain alignment. But of course, these are huge parts, and it is only reasonable to assume that over time uh, they will warp a little bit. And as you can see, we've got about an eighth of an inch gap uh, in the front here, a nice tight flush fit in the center, and then we've got about an eighth of an inch in the back. All right, I find the best way to do this is that to find a perfectly flat surface, and this is my workbench. It's just got a thin layer of paper, so that is a perfectly flat, smooth surface. I've actually applied a lot of heat to this already, um, so I'm just gonna continue to add a little bit more, and uh, what that does is it softens up the uh, hull, and the good news is because this is an epoxy layup, um, it takes the heat a lot better than a, like a polyester resin hull uh, would do. And what we're looking to do is get a perfectly flush uh, seam between the hull and the table. And then once we're done here, we're gonna do the same thing with the upper hull. Uh, and then we'll see how these two surfaces made up afterwards. All right, it was during this alignment uh, procedure that I found out that this lower hull is actually really badly warped. Now I've got this clamped down so all of this rear section is perfectly flush. Uh, and then you can see I've got almost 3 eighths of an inch of gap uh, in the front, unfortunately. Now if I force it down, what'll end up happening is the sides of the hull will buckle. None of this is good. So um, we're gonna take some quasi-extreme measures and we're actually going to split this hull right here where the um, arc begins and, uh, and is worst and most noticeable. So I'm gonna cut it right along this panel line. Not all the way though, uh, leave about a half an inch uh, on the bottom. That will allow the hull to settle, spread, I'll glue it reinforce it and uh, we will have perfect alignment. So here is my hull split. I just used a hacksaw to do it. You can see I got a sixteenth of an inch gap in there. Really this is nothing to worry about. Uh, back is flush. Moving forward, you can see even just sitting there it's a lot better. And if we just give it a little push we've got a perfectly flush flat finish. So heat things up, let it settle, let it cool, uh, do a little bit of binding and uh, filling in the tail there and we'll be good to go. All right, here's the finished result of spreading the hull there. Um, just like a 32nd of an inch down to nothing and maybe 32nd of an inch down to nothing. Pretty darn good, I'm happy with that. We're gonna lock that in, uh, glue the um, lower section there in place, lock it down and uh, we'll be ready to move on. What I have decided to do now is put in some alignment pins that will keep the upper and lower hulls aligned all through the sides uh, and forward and back as well. Uh, and what I've done is I've ensured that uh, we've got alignment by using this compass, uh, setting a uniform width and marking out the holes. And I just chose to align them to these panel lines so that the upper and lower hulls uh, holes when marked out, will perfectly align once these uh, pins are drilled. Now I'm gonna use a 3 16 brass rod for this. Uh, cut off about an inch 
insert it in there, round off the tip, and then when the upper hull is dropped on top, uh, it'll go into the hole and uh, hold everything in alignment. All right, everyone, let's recap where we are at right now because I think I am going to cut this video off and we'll continue in the next one so this doesn't get to be too long. Uh, let's take a look at where we're at here. Now, I have uh, 3D printed a little retainer for the battery and that's just gonna sit right there in the hull and the uh, battery is going to sit just like this and uh, the ballast is in the keel uh, all of our bulkheads are in place I've got the retaining clips in place I've got the retaining pins for the hull in place to maintain alignment and I have um, modified the hull to address the warping that we had seen there earlier. I threw a coat of paint on the upper hull just to make sure that there are no terrible uh, faults in the hull that we need to address and there's just some minor ones I need to clean up uh, in here a little bit uh, a little bit of scratch filler in here, but it's starting to look really, really good. So we're going to be moving on to the next section uh, in the next video. Look for that coming very, very soon. Again, my name is Bob Martin. Thanks for joining me. Look for the next section coming out soon. NautilusDryDocks.com is where you'll find all of this information, videos, and resources for RC submarines. If you have any questions, I would love to hear from you. Bob at rc-sub.com. Again, thanks for joining me. We'll catch you next time.